What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Tuesday, June 11, 2024. My name is Chris Drummond. I am a freelance sports reporter. I'm also a casino host based out of Minnesota here. Um, got a special guest that's going to be coming on with me today. Her name is Alyssa Cole. Uh, she is the communications manager now for the city of Detroit, uh, coming back to a place that she originally, uh, I believe, is from. Uh, she has been a news reporter uh, in Mississippi and also in the state of Texas. So we're going to talk about her transition to a new role. We're going to talk about her why of getting into journalism. I'm going to ask her some fun questions as well and have a good time. So I'm looking forward to uh, talking to her. So without any, further, without any further ado, I introduce you, the wonderful, the talented, the beautiful, Alyssa Cole. Hey, okay, there we go. <laughs> How you doing, Alyssa? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Chris? I'm doing good, doing good. Glad to have you on. You look absolutely lovely today. Just want to throw thank that you. out there. You're very thank welcome. You. <laughs> very welcome. Um, Thank you for hopping on my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. I really do appreciate it. How's your day going so far? No problem. It's going really good. You know, the work doesn't stop when uh, you got a writing background, so you stay busy, but all is well. How about you? How are you doing? I'm good. This Today's an off day. So, you know, I typically, like mm -hmm. I said, I like to record uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays because those are my off days before I get back to the grind on Friday, which is my Monday. Everybody's Friday is my Monday. So it is what it is on that for sure. Um, Before I start peppering you with a lot of questions here, um, I want to reiterate why I wanted to have you on. Um, I know you started out in journalism, but you made your transition to communications manager of the city of Detroit. Uh, I know you've uh, been in Mississippi and Texas where you did your journalism at. Um, and I know obviously you got experience doing that. I'm a sports reporter as well. I like to talk to other reporters and get to know their why, why they do what they do and who they are as a person. I would love to hear the transition out of journalism to the communication manager role. Um, I'm going to assume that you're coming back home because you went to Michigan State University. So I'm assuming that you're coming back home. Um, so that should that's always nice to come back home to a place that you know pretty well. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk to you, break bread with you, and just get to know you a little bit. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, I'm ready for the questions. You know, okay. hit me with your first one. <laughs> okay. As I always do. This is my first question to everybody that's on the podcast, and it's, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Why did you get into journalism? And then tell me about the reasoning behind the transition to the communication communication manager role. Okay, perfect. Um, My why, I do what I do because I'm sure just like every other reporter you talk to, we all say, I love writing. And it's, it's, you know, it's a serious answer. Um, there's something powerful and magical about words and when you're able to put them together um, in a meaningful way that, you know, just carries a purpose or it can inspire someone or it can drive an organization forward. Um, I just love words. You can create anything with them. Um, you can make a world with them. So words are just uh, my big why. Uh, why I got into journalism Ooh, that is, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really talk about it too much out loud. Um, so I, I guess, you know, I, w w it led with writing, right? Um, right, right. I wasn't really sure actually what I wanted to do when I got to college. Um, I started as a science major and then I was exposed more to communications and I thought, okay, why don't I major in communications? So I changed my major to communications and um, I got exposed to my first radio class, which was my first time learning how to script write, you know, nap sure. pops, re that sure. sort of thing. And I fell in love. Um, from mm -hmm. that point, that's when I thought, 
maybe I should be a journalism major, which I tried to avoid at all costs, which is so funny. And that's exactly what uh, I was meant to do. So that's how I got into journalism. And um, you did mention, I, I did go to Michigan State, um, but my desire was, and my heart was always in the South. So I finished my freshman year at Michigan State and I transferred to the University of Southern Mississippi in the middle of my sophomore year. Sure, sure. And um, let me let me ask you, because obviously Michigan State is one of those prestigious schools out there in Michigan, but you said your heart was in the South. Did you always know that you wanted to go to the University of Southern Mississippi or was there other schools in mind for you? There was other schools in mind in the South. Of course, I considered Spelman. I considered Tennessee State University um, right. in Nashville. And my heart was always in the South because I was just privileged enough uh, growing up. My parents would pack me up in a Jordash suitcase and, and they would send me down to Nashville where my grandfather lives. And um, I would spend all my summers down there from about five years old to about 14 so um, those three months outside of Detroit every year growing up, it fed my hunger for wanting to see the world. And then, of course, as I got older, I understood that um, you can go to college anywhere, right? So mm -hmm. um, so that's how I wound up getting connected to the University of Southern Mississippi, because I actually had family that went to that particular school. And my family said, go somewhere where you have family. So I chose Southern Miss. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And you said Nashville, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, I love Nashville. I love Tootsie's. If you're familiar with Tootsie's, that's one of my favorite places to go. Okay, uh, okay. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the turn up is real, Alyssa. The turn up is real. No <laughs> doubt about it. Um, okay, I'm about to that, check it out. <laughs> yeah, you definitely. Tootsie's uh, is on Broadway. So if you're okay. a huge Broadway person and you like bars, they're on both sides. As you know, uh, Kid Rock, Tootsie's, and um, uh, what's that? He's on The Voice. Um uh, country singer um Blake Sheldon not, yes his bar Blake okay. Sheldon he has a bar too so if you get a chance to go with some girlfriends or go with your significant other or family or whatever definitely check that out no question okay okay sounds good thank you for the recommendation no <laughs> doubt um let me get to some favorite questions okay so you just tell me what some of your favorite questions are off the rip and we'll we'll uh rock and roll how about that Okay, you said t I tell you some of my favorite questions off the rip? No, no, no. Uh, tell me some of your favorite things based upon these questions. Okay. Okay, here we go. Favorite meal you like to cook? Breakfast. Oh, listen, we're going to be good friends, girl. We're going to be good <laughs> friends. Say that right now. Right Is it now. like a speed what? round? Do I need to like answer the question? No, really no, 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 no. Speed oh, round, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> we, breakfast, uh, you, was, you was with it, though. Breakfast. Okay, yeah. what breakfast? What breakfast? Breakfast, I love to make um, pancakes, scrambled eggs. Ooh. It depends on what kind of mood because the eggs, it's not just like scrambled eggs. They're going to have mm -hmm. like everything in them. It's almost like a loose omelet. Of course, mm -hmm. you got to have your bacon. Sometimes we go with turkey sausage. If I don't do the pancakes, then I like to get the bread that has like the cinnamon swirls or raisins. And as Ooh. simple as this sounds. It's just something about breakfast. Just eating that first meal when you wake up. It's mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> Girl, you're gonna have me taking trips to the 313. You better stop. Right? <laughs> oh, we do we do breakfast big up here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's some of my favorite stuff, no doubt. Okay. Favorite concert you've ever attended. Favorite concert. Okay. Favorite my uh, okay. That's a hard one. That's hard, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on this one. When okay. I was in middle school, um, wow. there was okay. this <laughs> there was this um, festival that still goes on. It's called Arts Beats and Eats, and it happens in Metro Detroit. And there was this upcoming singer. Her name was Rihanna at the time, and she was there. And there was a popping singer named Sierra, and there was an artist named Fabulous. And for whatever reason, they were headlining this concert. And I just happened to have, my parents had tickets to it, so they took me. And when Sierra got on stage, I was just like screaming so much in the front, waving my posters, that Sierra came to the edge of the stage and said, like, she spoke to me. She said, hello. And I just never forget that. So mm. I would say that's probably my favorite concert. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. I mean, you took yeah. me back about 20 years when you said right. middle school. I was like, oh, okay. All I right. 
I feel it. Yes. I feel it. Those are dope artists, though. I love Sierra. I love yeah. Brianna. Love Fabulous. Those are dope artists. That's what's up. Yeah. Favorite place you've ever traveled to? That's a hard one. Um, man, I've I've been to so many places, and at the same time, I feel like I haven't been to enough. Right. Um, right. favorite place I've traveled to, I would I would go ahead and I would say Southern Spain, the Providence of Andalusia. Uh, Cadiz was the city and I was, you know, I got a chance to uh, study abroad there uh, for a summer semester. And during that time, I just, you, you experience everything you experience that comes with travel, right? You get to live out your values and then you get to practice them. You get to determine what's best for you or what's a priority to you apart from family and friends, just as an individual coming into self. And I was in my young twenties at that time too. So it was like perfect time. Um, but the food was good. The culture was good. It was very family oriented. It was warm. The sun didn't set until like 10 o'clock at night. Wow. Um, my host family was so kind and amazing. So I would probably say Kavi's. Okay, I like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, favorite sport you like to watch on TV? Favorite sport you like to go to in person? Favorite sport I like to watch on TV, no doubt, is football. Um, and that's that's just that's just culture. That's just family right there. You know, it's nothing like mm -hmm. getting out of church on Sunday and curling mm -hmm. up on the couch with your dad and watching mm -hmm. football and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. all things above. Um, and then the one I would say I like to watch most in person, it's a split between like baseball and basketball, but I'm going to go through, I'm going to say basketball because I worked as a videographer in college okay. and I used to uh, do the video recordings for the basketball games and I would have the headset on and everything. And during that, like just months of that work, I just fell in love with basketball, just up and down the court, just seeing like how they move and and the plays they're doing and how fast they're going. It's just like, oh my gosh, I couldn't get enough of it. So basketball in person. <laughs> Much respect to Tom Izzo, uh, obviously at Michigan right? State. Um, no <laughs> question about that. Detroit Pistons, they got a nice young team struggling right now, but that's okay. <laughs> They're young. It's okay. The Lions didn't come back, so can the Pistons. <laughs> uh, well, and speaking of that, I was going to finish off with that because I plan on coming to a Lions game this year. I'm in Minnesota, so I'm really not that – I'm next door pretty much. Um, but I want to come to a Lions game because I've never been to see Detroit Lions play football, okay. and I would love to come to that field. Plus, it's indoors, <laughs> which is great. Uh, because it gets very cold. I think it's later in the year that the game I'm coming to. So I know it's going to be cold out there. So I'm planning on coming to that game. Obviously, if I'm in the city of Detroit, I'm definitely going to have to hit you up. Cause we got to get some breakfast. Oh, no yeah, question. please do. We're going to no get doubt. breakfast. That's how you do it. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Okay. So now I want to uh, talk to you about your day to day. So first, what I want you to do is give me a couple of um, – journalism stories that you remember that some of your favorite stories that you've done and then talk about you leaving that industry and hopping over to communications manager and talk about your role there what you do okay some of the stories that i've done that were some of my favorites well i was a hard news reporter but i'm gonna keep it light you know i don't want to mm. get <laughs> too mm. crazy so right, um right. on the light end i would say um one time i did a story when i was in the rio grande valley south texas shout out to the 956 mm -hmm. um i was uh working on a story um with a veteran and he just happened to be living in deplorable conditions it was around a uh, veterans day time oh. and um I reached out to him, asked him about his time in the service, interviewed him, talked about what kind of home improvements he wants to see and how the community can help him. A few days later, um, an organization reached out and they said, we want to give him a brand new home altogether. So wow. that was amazing. So they gave him a brand new home. Other people in the community reached out with groceries to fill up his new fridge and all types of things to add to his new home. And I was there to cover that as well, live and get the post interview. Um, so that was very meaningful. Um, 
hard news stories, man, I, I have a handful from, you know, getting caught, you know, over a thousand miles away from home, right in the middle of the pandemic and trying to figure out was, you know, left from right. Um, being on the border for immigration um, at 3 a.m. in the morning when it's most active on the river um, and running through the brush and crawling on my elbows and knees with Border Patrol agents um, with a, wow. a secondary camera in my hand um, from, you know, uh, you know, what, what else do I mention from getting a chance to uh, meet and interview immigrants coming from Ukraine during the middle of the war to right. San Antonio and getting a chance to experience their first Thanksgiving American holiday, um, you know, just coming into the country. Um, there's a ton I could pull from, but I would say probably immigration stories and stories where there's active change happening in someone's life. Those I can just never forget. I feel that. Um, and this is kind of a bonus question here, Alyssa, is that, you know, what would you say to somebody who wants to come in and be a reporter, like some advice for somebody that wants to be a reporter that's covering hard news because or soft news, either news in general, but especially hard news. It's hard news. Sometimes you can take that home with you. Right. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to separate yourself from that. Me being in sports, you know, yeah, it's win or loss. It's tough. Yes. Kids cry. High schoolers have cried because <laughs> the season is over. I feel for them. I really do. But yeah. at the same time, it's not like hard news. So what would you say is um, some advice you would give to somebody that wants to be a reporter in this industry? Well, I would like to tie in two things that you mentioned. Um, advice, you know, getting into the industry, um, hit the ground running immediately. If you start young, if you start young where you're still in your college years or you're just coming out of college, take that internship, even if it doesn't pay. Go to your local newsroom. Pick up mm -hmm. a camera in the sports department, which is where I want to tie this in. Um, our local news sports departments um, is small and it's changing. The industry is changing every day. Um, sure. They need the help. Uh, go to that game that they can't cover that's happening on the other side of town where they just need just one minute of highlight reels. Even if you don't know sports, because that's exactly the situation I was in. The key rule is follow the ball. And I promise you from that, that is like the best foundation to learn how to shoot. And I did that for one year, you know, and then I started to learn sports and how to, how to write a highlight reel. But just go to places where you're needed. Make yourself accessible. If you're starting your career later in your years, which I've met people down the road where they, you know, you know, late 20s, 30s, you know, and they say, yeah, you know, I want to make the switch to news, you know, um, start hitting the ground running on your own. Pick up that iPhone, go get that camera at Walmart that's in your budget, start making a reel, start talking on camera, make mistakes, get creative, take the MMJ approach. Every, every stand-up doesn't have to be just you talking in front of the camera. Make it interactive and engaging and lay a little nap pop, lay a little B-roll over it. Um, but, you know, have thick skin. Um, that was one thing my professors taught me. Uh, they said it almost every year to the point where we're like, man, like, you know, what are we about to get into? And I'm glad right. I listened. Um, you must have thick skin in this industry. Cry. It's okay. Open up your eyes. Let the tears flow. You're going to have some hard days. You're going to miss your family when you're away. You're going to feel like no one understands you. Sometimes you may be the only one that looks like you in the room. Let mm. it out, cry and accept it and move forward because I promise you on the other side of this, you will be a stronger person. That would be the best advice I could give. Girl, you're speaking the gospel right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, not the gospel, but the gospel. I like the that. Gospel. I like the that. The gospel, for real on that, yes. no doubt. I mean, I, I can't <laughs> say it any better. Uh, uh, you can't say it any better, I should say. <laughs> no question about it. Um, I, I love what you just said. And it's really a tie into mental health as well. And you could talk about your job that you have now day to day, yes. but tie that in with mental health because absolutely when you, when you have, or when you work these hours of journalism, they're not conventional hours. Sometimes they're overnight. Sometimes they're uh, two to 12. Like for me, I work two to 12. Uh, so that's afternoons to midnight, right? That's I get off super late, but these are not business type hours where it's eight to four, nine to five. Talk about how you keep your mental health strong, but also, how you work life balance right now being a communications manager of Detroit. I'm, I bet your hours are a little bit different <laughs> than what they was probably in journalism. 
But still, you still go through things, like you said, writing and stuff, and you still got your mental health that you got to uh, be aware of. So talk about that. Absolutely. And yes, the, the touching on mental health and transitioning out of news, um, I, I do want you know folks to know um, transitioning out of a career that you really love and that you worked very hard for is never an easy decision, whether it's journalism no. or not. Um, right. It was not easy. Um, so I had to get my mental health um, in check and I had to discipline myself. Um, I had went from Hattiesburg to the Rio Grande Valley to San Antonio and San Antonio was the city where I decided it was time for me to make that transition out of news. Uh, before that happened, I was in um, therapy for two years and it made a dramatic shift and change wow. for my mental health for me. And it made me feel um, empowered and it, it encouraged me enough to um, go ahead and make that decision. Um, and it was worth the investment. Um, you know, a lot of people are confused when it comes to therapy and things like that. You pick up your insurance, you call the number, you ask questions and you find a copay and it, it could cost what anywhere between 40 to $60 every two weeks. So I just want to say that because I don't hear people say enough how affordable it can be. And I, sure. I would love for that to be more of a part of a conversation. It's worth it. Um, and then outside uh, San Antonio, I was at KSAT, uh, Channel 12 News, ABC affiliate, Grand Media. Um, and I decided to wrap up my time there. I was very fortunate to work as a reporter, fill in anchor, host uh, specials during Christmas time. And I even got a chance to host, um, what is it? Uh, the KSAT Plus, like the online streaming platform. Okay. And I got to do that a couple of times. Um, it was very hard to walk away from that, but I spent 12 years away from Detroit um, and it was time for me to go back home and be my family. And um, I made that decision. And when I came home in this economy at the time, it was what, just last year, late 2023, um, this economy, it is very competitive right now for jobs, especially with people with our background, because a lot of people claim they can do it right until right. it's time to get in there, you know, and show then mm -hmm. it's like a different story, right? So um, absolutely. I came home, absolutely. And um, I just want to be transparent as possible because there's always a lot of people who make this transition or just make career changes in general. Yep. Um, I came home in October and I applied for jobs left and right, even leading up to October. And I finally got an interview through some networking and connections about late November and then okay. I started in the first week of December. So it took a little time. Did I feel the discouraged moments? Of course I did. But um, but thank God for friends and family to, uh, you know, offer support. Um, started uh, at the city of Detroit first week of December uh, for the human resources department um, as their communications manager, one person team. And um, I focused on internal communications um, promoting employee engagement. That's like a buzzword these days. I'm learning like on LinkedIn and different things. Um, everybody's mm -hmm. trying to implement employee engagement. Um, a lot of things have changed since the pandemic. A lot of us are hybrid or remote or we're still in the field. And, you know, and how do we engage everyone um, in an easy communicative or uh, what is it? Using communication and using community. How do we do that? So I work with that team. I do newsletters. Sure. I help run social media. Um and just the other day, a few days ago, I hit my six month mark. So it's been really cool. It's been really interesting. <laughs> I love that. On here with Alyssa Cole, a former news reporter, communication manager, city of Detroit on my work hard, play harder podcast. I love the answer that you just gave, especially about being transparent about therapy. You know, a lot of people sometimes feel ashamed. Uh, when they seek out help and go to therapy and different things of that nature, people don't talk about pricing. People don't talk about how affordable it is, but you need those boundaries set. You need those outlets to go to sometimes because everybody has days. I have days, you have days. We all have days where we just ain't feeling it. whatever the hell it is. It ain't right. Something's wrong. Something's off, but it's good to recognize that and know that, okay, those days are coming, but what can we do to kind of, you know, alleviate some of that stress, right? I call moms. I'm a huge mama's boy. I'm out here by myself in Minnesota, though. Moms is back home in Georgia. My dad is in upstate New York. It's, it's all good. But I call them. I talk to them. It gives me calmness. I like to write poetry. I like to work out. 
going to the gym and lifting them weights, playing that loud ass music gets me going. <laughs> no question yeah. about it. Right. So we all have our outlets to go to whenever we need to go to them in order to kind of keep our mental health strong, relieve our stress and stuff like that. So it's a question that's worth asking. Um, with that being said, though, we got to go to this or that. OK, that's what I like to do right now. And that's basically throwing out two things that you can choose from one or the other. Are you with me, Alyssa? I'm with you. OK, here we go. Popeyes or KFC? Popeyes. <laughs> oh, girl, we're going to be good. We're going to be good. I'm telling you, we're going to be good, girl. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. OK, here we go. We're starting off good. Do you eat chicken wings? Yes. Okay, here we go. Barbecue or lemon pepper? Lemon pepper. Okay, wet or dry? Ooh, dry. Okay, bone in or boneless? Oh, bone in all day. <laughs> okay. okay, so you like to get a little messy is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. When it comes to the wings, me too, me too. I love that. All right. <laughs> You from Detroit, so I'm gonna throw this out here. Which player would you rather uh, uh, roll with or choose? Okay, would you rather go with Jared Goff or Kay Cunningham? Oh my gosh, I wish I knew so much more about sports. But this is what I admire <laughs> about sports people. I'm just gonna say Jared. I'm just because that's who I know. <laughs> I could not tell you who the other person is. Shout out to him. But uh, okay. but yeah, okay. I am. Have- <laughs> I, I I feel you, Alyssa. You was listen. I walked you out to the plank, and you just said, "Hell, it, I'm a jump," because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right into the Jared. water. I feel it. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I put you on the spot right there. I got you. Here we go. These next four have to do with music. Okay, next four has to do with music concerts you'd rather go to. So here we go. First one: Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Oh, Kendrick Lamar. Okay, okay. I got you. Brandy or Monica? Uh, oh, you paused on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was hard. That was hard. They okay. were both so good, but Brandy. Okay, okay. Mary J. Blige or Mariah Carey? Oh, that this one is just you did me wrong. You did me mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> You know, a situation, I'll say this, I'll pick an answer. Situations like this, I had a friend in high school that would say, can I just fall and break my neck? (laughs) She was so crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, um, oof, oof, oof. I'm going to say, don't hate me, Auntie Mary. I'm going to say Mariah Carey. I know I'm wrong for that. (laughs) Okay. That's okay. That's all right. Um, Listen, that's a hard one to choose from. That's hard. That was okay. hard. So here we go. Last one. Chris Brown or Usher? Hmm. I would probably say just for the sake of seeing how everything evolved, Usher. Okay. All right. Yeah. Which sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? Mm, bowling. Are you a good bowler? I am. I'm pretty good. I am. I am. I went bowling not too long ago. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, Alyssa, you you said that like you capping right now. Are you capping right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Have you, I I went duck bowling for the first time a while ago, and oh. I didn't realize how small you know the pins were, and I was like, I don't know if I like this, but it was it was okay. fun. It was fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I got you. Technically, duck bowling. Right, right. You know, okay, I feel you on that. Here we go. Yeah. Do you like desserts? Oof, love them. Okay, here we go. I'm going to throw four categories of desserts out. You have to choose one to get rid of, okay? Okay. Here we go. Candy is one. Cookies is two. Cake is three. Ice cream is four. Which one are you getting rid of? candy all day <laughs> what oh wow oh man okay yes. yeah i don't really eat candy like that <laughs> okay i would have said cake for me for sure but that's okay I'll that agree. means that means more cake for you and and, and more candy for me so exactly we, we working it, it out. out we making it, it work out. okay yeah. 
No do you eat potato behind. chips? <laughs> do you eat potato chips? Oh, I love chips. <laughs> okay, here we go. Same process. I'm throwing four categories out there. You got to get rid of one of these companies, okay? So Pringles is one. Doritos is two. Ruffles is three. Lay's is four. Which one are you getting rid of? Oh, that's hard. Probably Pringles. <laughs> Probably oh. Pringles. Just, oh, just because Doritos, I mean, spicy nacho, spicy nacho. And okay. then, you know, Lay's, hot sauce, and Ruffles. Oh, like, I'm mm. trying to live. I don't want to put that out there in the world. <laughs> I, feel you. I feel you on that, girl. I feel you on that. Ruffles yeah. is number one for me. Uh, that sour cream and cheddar is the best chip ever made. The best chip ever made. I'm saying, I'm saying, ruffles okay, okay. are delicious. Okay, we vibing right now, girl. We I don't know about the Pringles stuff. You, you got me with the Pringles, but we we vibing on everything else. I feel that. Yeah. Here we go. Two more for the this or that. Which player uh, would you rather choose? I'm gonna throw another sports question out there for you. Okay, another sports one. Forgive me, but I'm gonna throw it out there. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Thomas or Barry Sanders. Now, these are Detroit legends. Yes, I know. Now, this one I, I am familiar with. Okay, I'm going to go with Isaiah Thomas because mm -hmm. I feel like his story, I mean, we, you know his story, right? If you're from Detroit, you know his story. If you went to sports, you know his story. Sure. But I don't know if it's as widespread as Barry Sanders. So I would I would lean that way. Give him some more shine, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Hashtag let it be known. <laughs> uh, Zeke, we're going with Isaiah Thomas. No no question about that. Okay. Call me Isaiah. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, last one of the this or that, music-wise. Which music performance would you rather go see? Would you rather go see J. Cole or Big Sean? Now, you there in Detroit now. I just want to let you know. <laughs> oh, and I'm trying to pretend like I haven't seen these guys but uh, if I had to choose oh, this is hard I I'm going to go with Big Shy because he's hometown I know mm -hmm. what that feels like mm -hmm. and J. Cole would want you to choose he would want you to make a choice like that mm -hmm. would, no doubt no doubt Big Shy all day <laughs> okay, okay, you did pretty good on that, Alyssa. You did pretty good. <laughs> now, if Alyssa was not being, uh, or I should say, if Alyssa wasn't in journalism or in communications, right, what career choice would she have pursued and why? No doubt. I probably would have picked something in the sciences more than likely if I didn't pick journalism at the time that I did. Um, that was the route I was going on and journalism and science mirror each other in several different aspects. Um, there's always the the who, the what, the hypothesis, what do we expect the end result to be, what the process is along the way, documenting it. And that's the real journey, the, the actual process. And I think scientists and journalists, they both see that the actual journey of it all is the process. That is the destination every day. Right. So, yeah. Okay, now it's time for some rapid fire. Okay, so the first thing that comes up in your mind when I ask these uh, next 10, 10 things that I have listed, okay? So here we go. Favorite TV show? Right now? <laughs> Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, right now. Bridgerton, okay. you're right. Okay, that's a good show, by the way. Very good show. Okay, yeah. favorite color? Green. Okay. Favorite board game? Favorite board game? Um. Oh, oh it's like cards, so it's not really board. Uh, okay, if I had to choose board, I would probably say sorry. Yes. Yep, yep. That's my favorite <laughs> one, too. My favorite one, too. Favorite card game? Spades. Spades. Oh, you know how to play some spades. Oh, I'm not a play spade. I know how oh. to dominate spade. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds like fighting words right there. <laughs> sounds like fighting words right there. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, favorite restaurant? 
favorite restaurant? Um, oh, I know this is rapid fire. Uh, favorite restaurant? I would probably say any any place that sells sushi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, uh, for being transparent again, I've never had sushi in my life. Are you open to eating raw fish? I, I am, but, you know, it has to be a certain, like, you know, listen, it has to be a certain place or a certain people I will go with because I don't right. want to go by myself because I don't know what I'm choosing. I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> I, I don't want to go by myself. And I don't have any friends that like sushi out here. Everybody is either Italian, Mexican, or chicken. <laughs> so chicken, see, that's chicken. It. look. Right. Right. So and I'm with that. I'm just I just don't have any sushi eating friends out here. That's all. So okay. Maybe uh, when I go to Detroit. You, I was about to say, well, you you will when you come to Detroit. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I love it. I love it. Here we go. Uh we got five more to wrap it. Is mom's spaghetti overrated? M M's restaurant. Um, I haven't been. You haven't been? I haven't. Okay. okay. I had okay. it. But I would okay. love to go because I love spaghetti. And my mom yeah. loves spaghetti. I'm trying to <laughs> find out because they told me that his restaurant is there. When I go, I would love to go to that restaurant because I'm a huge Italian person. No doubt about it. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. Tell me, tell me, what is your worst, or uh, not worst, but what is your best, like, sport? If you were to play a sport, what would be the best sport you would play? If I really buckled down into it, the best sport I could see myself playing is either soccer or golf. Okay. What's the worst yeah. sport? I played those two sports. Okay. Okay. What, what would be the worst what would be the worst sport that you uh that you played? Time in my life without quitting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Next two questions, okay? If there was the three worst. albums cross it, it, cross it, country going, Ooh, cross country. Okay, okay, cross country. Okay, that's what's up. If there were three albums, uh oh, I think we you... got a lag in our connection. Uh, oh, hold on, let me see. Are you with me? Yep, we do. Yes, but I, I'm a couple of seconds behind. No, you good? Okay, I, I got you back. Here we go. If there was three albums that you can listen to that has no skips, what would those albums be? Would be Off the Wall, Michael Jackson. Wow. Um, it would be oh, No Skips. And I, I know I know the answer to this. I would probably say I'll get a little relevant. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I like I like uh, I like Summer Walker. She put you she put you in the mood. Okay. Uh, she put you in the mood. Um, you know what? I'm gonna change out Summer Walker for SZA. SZA's latest album. I would oh, listen SZA. to that. Ooh. Yeah. Her SOS. I'm gonna trade that out for Summer. Shout out to Summer. But uh, the third one would be um, probably Stevie Wonder's Hotter. What is it? Hotter. What is it? Uh, Keys. Oh, no, it's uh, the one with the generation July. life, Gener generational life, or generation life. It's something like hotter than July, something like that. Oh, Stevie Wonder. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right. Uh, last one is this one. Name three things that you cannot go without that you need to use every single day. Three things I cannot go without that I need every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, probably <laughs> look, don't say the obvious, right? Um, my dog, <laughs> um, okay. yes, I can't, can't go without him. Okay. Um, a camera <laughs> gotta have it. it. You never know. You never know. Uh, I never know. And the third thing I would probably say, um, something sweet. <laughs> hey, I'm with you on that, girl. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm with you on that. Obviously, you got a face for the camera, so I understand why you oh, want the camera. You. There's no question about that. Yes, <laughs> and something sweet. I mean, I can't go without sweets either. So I, I'm totally with you on that. What what kind of dog you have? 
I have a little Shizu. I have a little Shizu. He's three years old. He is too okay. sweet, too. Awesome. I love that. Okay. Let's talk about advice. Now, you gave advice. You gave yeah. advice on people. Oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> is that a black and white, right? Or the yeah, gray and white? black and white. Yes. Mm, okay. I'm with you on that. I love I love dogs. I'm a dog lover. You dog lover. Yes. Um, you talk about advice that you gave someone. What is some advice that someone has gave you that you hold on dearly to? I would say, you want to know? I, I'm going to switch it up because I, you know, I could just say something that's like cliche, right? But there sure. was some, there was some advice a woman gave me a long time ago, and I didn't understand it until years later when I um, passed through a couple stations, I should say, moved around mm -hmm. a little bit, experienced life a little bit more. She said something to me that I thought was a little shallow. And she was, she said, uh, it's all about the title, right? It's about the title. Like take the particular job for the title. And I thought, no, you know, it's about passion and this, this, and that. But really understanding what she was trying to say back then and understanding now, she was trying to say, don't forget to navigate your professional life, understanding how people perceive you. Because everyone's not just looking directly at the passion. They'll just see a hard worker. Some people need to see a title. Sometimes people need to see status. Um, sometimes people need to be able to perceive you in their ways, you know, um, and you need to be able to cater to all of those things. And at that time, I did not understand that. Um, now, I, I feel like I remind myself of it almost every day. Wow. Okay, I like that. That's some cool. That's some cool advice. What is uh? What is three things that I need to do when I touch down in Detroit? What are some recommendations you can give me? Number one, you got to go to Belle Isle. You got to go to Belle Isle. You got to check out the island. Um, it's between you know Detroit uh, right there, and of course Windsor, Ontario is right there on the border. Um, mm. very cool. Um, you got to do that. Of course, you got to you got to have a Coney dog or corned beef sandwich. That's straight Detroit right there. Very street Midwestern food. Wow. OK. <laughs> and then okay. The, the third thing I would say. um, I would say, you know, pick any like cultural art relevant place of your choice, whether it's Motown, whether it's Detroit Institute of Arts, whether it's just walking through the Wayne State campus or, you know, um, the Charles H. Wright Museum. I mean, that they just had a Black Panther exhibit there. You know, you don't find that, you know, everywhere. And that's curated to the African-American experience, uh, these different exhibits. Um, I would say pick one of your choice and you won't be, you know, disappointed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, definitely Motown. Uh, no question about that. I definitely want to do that. And Black yeah. Panther, that's once in a lifetime. I mean, I had a chance to see... Uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church and Martin Luther King's uh, birth house when I was yes. in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. That was historic and I love that. I love doing historic stuff like that, especially black history because, you know, we got the shortest month of the year. It's also my birthday month, which is February. So, hey, you know, I, I love anything black history. I'm with it. I'm totally with it. No question about it. Yes. What is something that you want to mention that we haven't talked about on this podcast episode before we conclude? Um, I would just say the last thing I would mention, um, you know, um, be confident in who you are, um, do what you need to do to tap into who you are, what you want and what you feel and just totally understand it, wrap your mind around it and just be confident when you go out in the world and when you touch people and when you communicate with them and when you make commitments and decisions and you decide to explore or you decide to change your mind or you decide to say no, just live every day out the best way you can up and down from your eyes open to they close um, because this life is beautiful. We're on this earth and just take it all in, live life every day. Absolutely. Uh, I live by a hashtag of DTBD. And people say, what does that mean? I say dare to be different. You yes. don't have to be what people perceive you to be. Live your life to the best of your abilities. If it's different, if it's unique, then damn it, live your life different and unique. Right. Absolutely. You want to be able to be safe. You want to be able to be within the rules, obviously. But you also want to live 
where you're comfortable, right? Because what's comfortable to you may not be comfortable to others, and you don't allow others to perceive what your comfortable is. Um, exactly. That's just something that I like to live by myself personally. And just to add on to what you do, you know, you you bake the cake, girl. I'm just putting ice and then sprinkles on it. That's all I'm doing. So, um, you know, you know, so that's it. That's all I'm doing. So with that being said, um, I thank you for coming on to my podcast. Got a sense of what you do now, what you did before. Got to know you a little bit. Got to know your story of upcoming and upbringing. Um, anytime I'm in Detroit, which will be this fall, I would definitely have to hit you up. We're going to have to get yeah. a space game going. That's for sure. <laughs> Ain't no question about that. <laughs> we definitely exactly. going to do that. Thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, shout out to you and your podcast. I got a chance to check out a couple of videos. It's nice when people get to share and exchange stories. So thank you for reaching out. You're so kind and a great host. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Alyssa, so much. Please stay in touch and you have a wonderful Tuesday. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.